proudly we hail. City where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the United States Army. Our presentation is titled, Love and the Sergeant. And it proves once again that he who laughs last, not only laughs best, but also gets the girl. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment. But first, young man, let's talk about your future and America's future. They're important to each other, you know, and to you. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you, a job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. And now the first act of the proudly we hail production, Love and the Sergeant. <laughs> There are four people involved in this story. To begin with, there's a girl named Millicent Adams, there's Artie Smith, Jack Ryan, and finally there's me, Sergeant Edward Lewis. There'll be some other people moving in and out of it, but all you'll have to really follow will be the four of us, Millicent, Artie, Jack, and me, Ed Lewis. Of course, this is a story that has to do with coincidence, but I can't help that because everybody knows that coincidences do happen. Now, this story starts on the night of July 1st, 1944, in New York City. Millicent Adams, a girl from Omaha, Nebraska, came to New York and found a job at an advertising agency. She'd spend a couple of nights a week as a hostess in a canteen for servicemen, which was run by her church. Now, on this particular night of July 1st, 1944, she met a soldier named Artie Smith at the club. Artie was different from most of the other servicemen who were there that night. Artie's outfit was at Camp Kilmer, New Jersey, about to go overseas. It was my outfit, too. I was Artie's squad leader. We'd been given 12-hour passes to visit New York. Well, Artie happened to wander into this particular club and he met Millicent. As I say, they met that night at about 7 o'clock. An hour later, they knew they were in love. Don't ask me how they knew it. If you've never been in love, you'd never understand it. And if you have been in love, I don't have to explain it. It seemed they had found out everything about each other that mattered. And when Artie said, Will you wait for me, Millie? He meant it. And when she said, I'll wait for you, Artie. She meant it, too. And so they were engaged. Arm in arm, they walked out of the canteen into the lights and the noise of Broadway. They found a little jeweler shop on a side street. There was a ring in the window. Artie thought it was much too small, but he only had about $100 in his wallet. Anyhow, Millicent didn't care. Artie, it isn't how big the ring is. I don't care about that. I sure wish I could buy you a rock that would knock everybody's eye out. Darling, this one is good enough for me. They bought it. And then they found a telephone booth, and Millicent put in a long-distance phone call to her dad in Omaha. Hello? Pop? Millie! Pop, listen. I'm engaged. You what? I'm engaged. Oh. Well, who is it this time? He's a soldier, Pop. His name is Artie. When's the wedding? You gonna come home for the wedding? Well, I don't know, Pop. He's going overseas tomorrow. Well, wish him luck for me. How long have you known him? Oh, Pop, I've known him all my life. I mean, how long have you known him? We met tonight. Oh. Well, good luck. Melissa, are you crazy? Sure, Pop, I'm in love. I'll write you a letter tonight. I'll tell you all about him. Goodbye, Pop. Yeah. Goodbye, Millicent. Well, they didn't have any time to be together, talk, plan. She walked with him to the bus terminal, and they said goodbye. I was on that last bus to Camp Kilmer myself, but I didn't see her. I was sitting in my seat, fast asleep. As the bus pulled out, he sat down next to me and he woke me up. 
He had to talk to somebody. I could have cheerfully killed him right then and there. I was snoozing away, minding my own business. Who needed this lovesick Romeo? Sarge. Sarge, I'm engaged. Congratulations. Wake me up when we get back to camp. All my life I've been looking for this girl, and when I do meet her, it's the day before I go overseas. Well, what do you want me to do, laugh or cry? Her name is Millicent. That's nice. Oh, Sarge, she's a dream. She's beautiful. Do you understand? Beautiful. Yeah, I understand. I mean, some girls are pretty, but she's beautiful. Do you get the difference? Oh, for crying out loud. Give me a light, will you? Yeah, sure. Sarge, I mean, I've run around here and there with a few girls, understand? I understand what? And when people spoke about being in love, I said to myself, what are they building? What kind of propaganda is this love business? Ah, uh, but tonight, I found out... It's bothering you? I was sitting here sleeping, minding my own business. Millicent. Millicent and Artie. Sarge, when we get back, I want you to come to the wedding, understand? Uh, I want you to be my best man. How about it? How do you know she's going to wait for you, Artie? Uh, Oh, Sarge, I don't care about those three stripes of yours. I'd bust you right in the mouth if you weren't my best friend. How do I know? We're in love, me and Millicent. Yeah. Love. Oh, it happens, that's all. You can't question it. it. It comes or it doesn't. Look, I just had a couple of hours to kill in New York, and now my whole life is different. Yeah. Like I said before, Artie, wake me up when you get to camp. Huh? Well, he didn't get any sleep that night. He sat up and wrote a letter to Millicent. Right after breakfast, we loaded onto the train and went to New York and boarded the transport. Every day, he wrote Millicent a letter. We landed in France and went into the lines, but he kept writing those letters to Millicent. And after a while, the letters from Millicent started reaching Artie. I'll never forget that first one. Listen. Listen to what she says. Dearest Artie, every night as soon as I get home from the office, I turn on my record player and play the song we danced to that night we met, when we both knew it was happening to us. I can remember every word we said to each other. Darling, I keep looking at your picture, and I had another one made to keep on my desk at the office. Hey, Romeo, grab the M1. Here comes uninvited guests. Well, the letters kept coming and going, and after a while I said, Louis, you're the one who's wrong. What are you laughing at these people for? You're the smart one, maybe, but what are you getting out of life? These people are in love, man, love. Isn't it wonderful? Well, anyhow, then came the night the old man sent for me. I went back to the command post, and it was for what I had figured, a patrol. Any questions, Lewis? No, sir. I'm to take two men and bring back a prisoner. If you leave a little after midnight, you should have plenty of time to get back before dawn. Yes, sir. And while you're here, make sure you pick up some dry socks for the men in your squad. You might as well hang around a few minutes. Red's due back from regiment. There might be some mail. Yes, sir. If any mail did come through, there's bound to be something for Smith. That boy sure does get a lot of letters, doesn't he? Now, you know how it is, Captain. He's engaged. Mm, must be quite a girl. She writes him every day. Yeah. Oh, here comes Red now. Red! Sergeant Lewis, going back the line. Anything for his squad? Oh, yes, sir. The usual. Letter for Smith. <laughs> Here's your letter, Artie. Oh, thanks, Sarge. We're going out on a patrol. Okay, have, uh, have I got time to read this? Sure, we've got about an hour. New, me, we'll take Gordon. No fireworks, all we want is a prisoner. I told Gordon on my way back here, and he'll be with us in a couple of minutes. And we'll figure it out. Brought you some dry socks. Well, lover boy, what has Millicent got to say for herself today? Shut up. Huh? I said shut up. Oh, well, pardon me. Lewis, I'm getting out of here. I'm going home. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're all going home someday, I hope. I'm telling you, I got to get home right now. She she can't do this. Come here, will you? Yeah. Artie, where you going? Now, let go Stop of me. What are you doing? Sit down. Yeah. Sit down before I knock you down. Going home. How far do you think you'll get? Wake up, will you? Yeah, I don't know what came over me. Here, look. Hmm? Look at this. It's a ring. Yeah, that's what was in the letter. My ring. She, she sent it back. Oh. oh, I see. What do you see? Nothing, nothing. I guess it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Here, read. Read the letter. Well, I, I don't think I ought it's to. It's all right. Read. All right. Dear Artie, this will be the hardest thing I'll ever have to do in my life. I'll just tell the truth, and that's all I can do. We met. Maybe we thought we fell in love. I guess the setting was romantic, and maybe we were both in love with the idea of being in love. Anyhow, I know it wasn't the real thing, 
for me anyway. Because the real thing happened to me yesterday. I met him at the canteen. And now I know what it's really like to fall in love. He's a soldier. He's an infantryman just like you. And he'll be headed for overseas any day now. Not that it matters, but his name is Jack Ryan. And we're engaged. You don't know how sorry I am. Ah, uh, tear it up. Well, I'm sorry too. Don't talk to me. Just let me alone, huh? Look. Look, uh, you don't have to go out on this patrol with Gordon and me. Tompkins missed the last one. He can take your place. No, I'll go. Kid, I know just how you feel. But look, the world's full of girls. Shut up. Say, if she could do a thing like this, she isn't worth it. It's a good thing you found out now. What? Okay, I will. But it's my business to take a patrol out, and I don't think you're in any shape to go. Oh, yeah? What do you want, a prisoner? All right, let's get a move on. I'll bring back the whole German army. Well, we, we didn't bring back the whole German army, although right then and there, I think Artie might have been able to do it if we gave him the chance. The following day, we moved out and ran the Jerry's out of a town called uh, Villa Maine, which is about as near as I can pronounce it. Then our whole battalion was pulled back into reserve. We were just resting and getting filled in our new equipment when they sent us a replacement who would bring the squad up to full strength for the first time in months. Are you Sergeant Lewis? Yeah, that's me. Well, the top kick said I'm in your squad. Oh, okay. This is Artie Smith. You'll meet the rest of the gang later. Hi. What'd you say your name was? Oh, uh, Jack Ryan. Uh-huh. Where are you from, Jack? Denver. Well, I guess there must be a lot of guys named Jack Ryan. Oh, there were plenty. You know, back at school, there was even a guy with the same name in my class. They were always getting us mixed up. Oh, wait a minute, wait you a see, minute. It's a, it's a long shot, but would you happen to know a girl named Millicent? Millicent Adams? Do I know her? Buddy, I'm engaged to her. That's all I want to know. <laughs> yeah, stand back. Hey, put up your hands, fellow. What's the big idea? That's for stealing my girl. Your girl? Cut it out, the two of you. Look, Sarge, he wants to fight. He can have it. And you can have her, that cheap little two Why, yeah. No! You're talking about the girl I'm going to marry, said, buddy. I said, cut it out. Put down your hands. Sit down. I said, sit down. Now, look. We've got enough of a fight in front of us. I won't stand for anybody swinging at anybody else in the squad. If you guys got a problem, settle them when war's over, huh? Look, Sergeant, he said something about my fiancé. I won't take that from anybody. I want to settle it right now. All right, all right, let's go where there's room enough, buddy. Well, listen, buddy, if you're close enough, there's room enough. That suits me. I'm not going to talk too. about I... this again to either one of you, and don't tell me it's none of my business. Look, sir. I'm running this squad. Uh... And one thing I know, we're going to have teamwork. We're going to work together. Do you understand that? I don't let me catch you looking for a place where you can square off. I don't care about what happened back home. Your squad and the job you have to do comes first. Now, shake hands. Okay, okay, maybe that's too much to ask. But I'm telling you both right now, behave yourselves. Oh, no, nothing doing, Lewis. This one and me, we got okay, a little Okay, so you socked him and he socked you. You're even. That's as far as it goes. Remember, that's an order. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we held production of Love and the Sergeant. And we'll return to our second act in just one moment. But first, you ask most anyone what they want out of life, and a great majority of the answers can be boiled down to just one word. That one word is happiness. Well, now, happiness is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Basically, I guess you might say that it's the achievement of your goals. To be happy is to be successful in whatever you do. And in today's highly specialized world, Training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. Under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as X-ray operation, photography, automotive maintenance, and communications. In all, there are over 150 courses to choose from. So for complete information on how you can benefit from this program, you visit your local United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. And now the second act curtain of the proudly we hail production, Love and the Sergeant. Well, 
Well, I had a problem, and it was a bad one. I couldn't blame either one of them. But still, I was in trouble. We are all in trouble. When you're in a fighting outfit that's in combat, you live in a tight little world of your own. The only people in it are the guys in your immediate outfit. There's nothing else. All that matters is your own little group. Your life is in the hands of the guys on either side of you. So like I say, you're in the world's worst trouble if there's any friction. And Artie and Jack were so busy hating each other, I knew they couldn't concentrate on the job all of us had to keep uppermost in mind. Still, I had to do something about it. Sir, I wouldn't have brought it up if I didn't think it was really serious. They're both good men, but you just can't order two guys to stop hating each other. I know. Love sure can create problems. <sighs> well, we're in a little luck anyhow. I've got a vacancy here in company headquarters. Red was sent back to the hospital last night. Emergency appendectomy. Uh -huh. I'll need a new mail clerk. That'll give us a chance to split those two up for a while. Well, Smith is qualified, sir. He went to a clerk school back in the States. That's just what I had in mind, Sergeant. I guess that'll solve the problem. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Captain... Uh... What is it, Sergeant? Well, uh, sir, if Artie Smith is going to be the new company mail clerk... What I mean is, sir, uh, if this girl Millicent writes letters to Jack Ryan, well, they'll all pass through Artie's hands. It's going to be kind of rough on him. Sergeant Lewis, I said I would solve the important problem. I didn't say I'd be able to keep everybody happy. <clears throat> yes, sir. After all, we can't have everything. No, sir, I guess not. Well, the letters still kept coming from Millicent Adams. Only this time, they were addressed to Jack Ryan. Artie Smith knew all about the letters because he had to pick them up at regiment and bring them back to the company. They passed through his hands. The neat, square, white envelopes, lightly perfumed, addressed to Jack in Millicent's familiar flowing handwriting. One thing you had to say about Millicent. She wrote every day. But lest you get the wrong idea, all of this really occupied very little of my attention. We were fighting a war, and there were plenty of other problems. Oh. Lewis! Yes, Lieutenant? You see any sign of that second platoon? No, sir. Looks like we're up here all by ourselves. Second platoon must have run into trouble, sir. Yeah, and we can't pull back. If we do, the Jerry's can outflank the whole battalion. We have to hold this position. Well, that's a good position here, Lieutenant. Plenty of cover. Only thing is, our ammo is running low. Haskins, is the wire still into the command post? I sure hope so, sir. Uh, hand me the phone. Uh, Big Fox... Big Fox, little cub calling Big Fox, over. Big Fox, come in, little cub. Where are you? Holding in farmhouse at intersection of map coordinates 1827. Need friends. All little cubs fighting off Big Bad Wolf. Can you hold? Uh, Lewis, how's our ammo? We're not rich, Lieutenant. Big Fox, could use some steam in the boilers. Hello, Big Fox. Big Fox. That's it, Lewis. The wire's dead. Think they got the message about the ammo, sir? I sure hope they did. I'd hate to have to think of a way to fight without it. Squad leaders, check your men for ammo! We were in one of those long, rambling stone farmhouses that you find along the French countryside. Could have held out against a regiment, provided we had enough ammunition. But it had been a long, tough fight taking the farmhouse in the first place, and the Germans had already counterattacked twice. If we didn't get some more ammo in a hurry, we had to fall back. It had been an hour since the phone went dead, and the ammo was getting lower and lower. Hold it! Hold your fire! Well, they attack in strength. Ryan, what do you got left? I should have a full clip in the gun and three more. Oh, no, just two more in my rifle belt. Yeah, that's about the same most of them have. Well, this could be it. Could be what, Sarge? I think we'll have to volunteer. Wait a minute. Yeah. Lieutenant. Oh, what is it, Lewis? Well, uh, if you have to pull the platoon out, sir, let my squad cover. It hasn't come to that yet, Lewis. But it might, sir. Yeah, it might. Uh, I'll talk to you in a couple of minutes. There's still a chance they can get some ammo up to us. Sarge. Hmm? What is it, Ryan? Well, you you and Artie Smith, you were buddies, weren't you? Wow, we knew each other a long time. He's a pretty good guy. I'm sorry about what happened. I'm not blaming you. Yeah, but he is. And I can understand that. Did you ever meet Millicent? No. A funny thing. It was my last pass in New York just before going overseas. I went to this canteen. It was a real nice place. Yeah, so I heard. Well, there she was. She was wearing an engagement ring. And I figured, uh, you know, she had a guy somewhere in the service. She was serving coffee, and that happened. 
She told me she never really knew the guy. Must have been the music. The mood she was in. Look, Sarge, what could we do? We fell in love. You and Smith, the two of you break my heart. Oh, she's beautiful. Not just pretty, Sarge. She's beautiful. Save it, Jack. I heard all this before. Hey, they attacking again? No. They're firing at something. Look. What? Out on the road. Coming up here. A jeep. Lewis. Lewis, there comes our ammo. If he can make it. Hey, can, can you tell who's driving? I can't see. Come on, boys. Be lucky. Oh, fire. The courtyard is home. Ryan, Gordon, open up those double doors. He can drive right into the house. Hey, Lewis. Lewis, isn't that... It's uh... Smith. Artie. Artie, run away if you step on the gas board. Hey, look out. My brakes are gone. Artie. Are you all right? Come on, Artie. you want to help him out of the sea? No, 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 I'm okay, Lieutenant. Hey, look in the back. Any of the boxes fall you out? You brought plenty, Artie. Yeah, clips for the M1s, belts for the light 30, and you got some 60 millimeter for the mortar. <laughs> the old man says to tell you L Company from 3rd Battalion should be here in less than two hours. Boy, I thought you'd never make it. Oh, I had to make it. Doesn't the mail always come through? The mail? I was back at the command post when the lieutenant got us on the phone. That's why I volunteered to bring up the ammo. I had mail delivered. Where's Ryan? Hey, Ryan, I can wait right for you. Oh, that's key. Thanks, Smith. I appreciate it, but I, I could have waited for it. No, 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 you couldn't. It's from, uh, you know who. You have to be a good guy to go through all this to bring me a letter from Millicent, considering everything. Well, uh, here's your letter. Thanks. Look, Artie, all this is nobody's fault. I want to... You and me can't be friends. Sure, sure. Go read your letter. I, uh... I understand. Decent kind of guy, that Ryan. Going off into a corner to read Millicent's letter so he doesn't have to embarrass you. Uh, you know what I was thinking of all the while those Germans were shooting at me? Huh? I was thinking, what a good guy that Ryan is. Hey, what are you grinning at? Why are you so fond of Ryan all of a sudden? Oh, well, Ryan and I, we uh, have a lot in common. Yeah? You see, the minute I picked up that letter back at regiment, there was something familiar about it. Millicent's handwriting looked a little shaky. I could feel a piece of cardboard in the letter. Huh? What was inside the cardboard, I wondered. <laughs> As if I didn't know. Oh, man, I couldn't wait to deliver this letter. <laughs> Look over there. Poor Ryan. No! Here. Go right ahead. The door's open. She, she can't do this to me. Ah, uh, do what? Sarge. Sarge, just listen. Listen to what she writes. Uh -huh. Dear Jack, this will be the hardest thing I'll ever have to do in my life. I'll just tell the truth. We met. Maybe we thought we fell in love. Yeah. How do you know? Well, now, Jack, remember, I'm a member in good standing of this club. Does she tell you who the guy is? No, oh, it, it isn't any guy. She says... I just think it's time I grew up. All my life I thought I would meet a knight on a white horse. Today there are no knights. And a handsome soldier... Well, people don't fall in love that way. Not for real. Not for keeps. Uh, why don't I just tear this up? Sergeant! Get your men in position. Looks like they're going to attack again. Well, Jack, you'll get over it, believe me. I think both you guys will be all right. Until next time. Or maybe you think that's all there was to the story. Now, that shows you you should never jump at conclusions. When the war was over, I was sent back home. I had my reenlistment furlough. Then I was reassigned to a headquarters outfit on Governor's Island in New York. One night, I happened to be in town. Thought I'd take in a show. So I was wandering along Broadway, and before I knew it, I'd gone into this serviceman's canteen. I had an hour to kill before showtime. I picked up a magazine. Can I get you some coffee, Sergeant? Uh, no, no thanks. Are you just back from overseas? Yeah, a few months. Hey, it's uh, pretty good music, isn't it? What's, uh, what's the procedure around here? You just ask a girl to dance? That's about it. Well, shall we? Well, I'm supposed to be busy making sure everybody has coffee. Everybody seems to be busy dancing. Suppose we could just have this one? Well, just this one. Then I have to get back to the coffee table. Good. My name is Ed Lewis. I'm Millicent Adams. Millicent. 
Millicent, I've known you for a long time. Uh, you've been away a long time, too. That particular line has been out of date for quite a while now. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Maybe I'll tell you someday. Is it really funny? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But I'd have to know you a lot better first. Have to know you a lot longer. Say, did, uh, did anybody ever tell you you were beautiful? <laughs> oh, yes. And I used to listen. Now I don't pay too much attention when a fella says it. Well, then I won't say it. Tell me, uh, you're not engaged by any chance, are you? No. Think you will be someday? Oh, I hope to. Uh-huh. Anybody in mind? Not now. Well, thanks for the dance. Excuse me. I have to fill the percolator. Oh, uh, will you be here tomorrow night? Yes. Okay. See you tomorrow night. Bye, Millicent. Goodbye, Ed. Uh, you know something? Mm, what? I must be slipping. You're the first one in a long time who didn't ask to take me home. Millicent, when I get ready to take you home, I'm going to take you home for good. And a year later, I did. That was long after I told her about Artie Smith and Jack Ryan. Fact of the matter is, I'd fallen in love with her long ago. The way both those guys used to talk about her and showed me her letters, how could I help it? Well, today, I'm an instructor in infantry tactics, but I can also teach a lesson or two in the mysterious art of love. I got two suggestions in case anybody's interested. First, never propose to a girl the same night you meet her. Second, never show her love letters to your sergeant. Class dismissed. I've got a question to ask all of you young gals listening in. Say, tell me, gals, are you kind of tired of the same old office routine? Well, now you can get away from it all. Join the Women's Army Corps. You can travel all over the world, meet new friends, see new places. That's right, in the Women's Army Corps, you can escape from the humdrum routine of your present life. Visit exciting places in your country and abroad. Make new friends among young men and women all over the world. And you'll have plenty of leisure time to enjoy your travels. You see, you get a 30-day paid vacation each year, plus many weekend passes, and of course, there are always the holidays. So why don't you join the WAX? You visit your local United States Army recruiting station, talk it over with the real friendly folks down there. Remember, gals, you're going to enjoy life more in the Women's Army Corps. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>